recognize the cost uh, for Swaram. But now that the case has gone up to the Tribunal de Grand Instance, uh, we now pay, uh, uh, what's the word for the legal fee? Retainer. Retainer. No, not a court fee, but just to keep the file uh, in phase running, uh, an amount of 3,000 euro uh, per month. So that amounts to about uh, a bit more than 12,000 ringgit uh, per month. Per month. So for, for Malaysia, this is really a lot of money. Uh, and I have to actually clarify that this money, is uh, this uh, Scorpion case and inquiry is purely funded by Malaysians. So we've had several fundraising events and, and all that because if your next question is going to be where the money comes from, it's really from Malaysian, Malaysian people and uh, uh, Mal yeah, concerned Malaysia. <laughs> Minimum, how long will it take to get the final decision? The court decision? Minimum. Okay, I'd say two years? Three years? Uh, the second one, second question. Yes, one and a half, maybe? I'm not sure. No, I'll say two. Uh, second question is um, so, what do you expect the, uh, in the end of this court case? Um, in other words, what, what is the, the best decision for Salam and what is the worst? Well, I think for Swaham, the best decision is to see the people uh, who Swaham thinks actually uh, corrupted or were corrupted uh, appear before a court in France and, of course, be sentenced. Uh, the worst case would be, but also it's something that could have happened, is that it's so technical that it's actually hard to be short 100% with all the companies in between, etc. There's a direct link between the corruption, the people, the companies, etc., and so that the judges don't have enough direct evidence to actually make people appear before court, or that court, even though people are appear before a court, uh, that they are uh, not bound guilty because it's complicated to prove. I think that would be too possible. Yeah, uh, from the Swaram point of view, uh, the reason why we decided to act very much out of the box because we don't normally go and file complaints in all different countries. But in this case, uh, the, the motivation were, were, were several. One is uh, there, was no, there, there was no progress on the Malaysian side. The Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission has still not opened in any investigations on this. Parliamentarians who have asked questions repeatedly keep getting uh, dead-end answers. Or, and even at one point, there were uh, some contradiction in, in, in the answers that were given. And so that's why we, we went all the way to file a judicial complaint at the French courts. Uh, there is no Freedom of Information Act in Malaysia, so which means that we'll never be able to get the contract or any of the documents in Malaysia. So we, we try to uh, access the judicial system in France in order that more information can be obtained. And that's the initial uh, motivation. Of course, we are surprised that the case has, has reached this far. And Swaram has actually been accepted as a civil plaintiff, which means that the inquiry continues to, to go on, even though slow, but it continues to go on. And we've managed to already get so much damning information, uh, even though the inquiry is slow, and even though the inquiry is uh, at still, still midway through or very much at an initial stage. So for Swaram, the expectation is uh, the truth. What actually happened in, in the procurement process? Why was there so, many, so much money uh, transacted between parties? And what happened to the so-called government-to-government um, uh, policy that is supposed to be practiced by the Defense Ministry? So here, it is not just Perimeca and Terra Sassi, but there's a whole string of other companies that were also introduced as a result of the uh, 
investigations by the public prosecutor. So the end result, we want the truth. And whoever that's responsible for all that corruption has to be brought to justice. It's, it's very clear, but the way it's being spun around and all that, it just makes it look like uh, we have an agenda. Our only agenda is to get the answers. We know we cannot find it uh, on our own soil. And it's quite unfortunate, you know, that we have to rely on a foreign judicial system, which is so different from ours and so on. But, but we try all methods, and this one seems to be providing answers <laughs> compared to our own public institutions, which are not moving on this case. Obviously, banned on protecting uh, people in high office. Can I ask a stupid question? Uh, I can understand the Malaysian interest in the case because it comes it's the money from the Malaysian public. Right? This case is a corruption where in the end the Malaysian government pays a lot more than what it should. But, I mean, France lost nothing. Right? What, what, you, you, what you get is that you get your submarines sold. <laughs> Right? So you get money coming into France. Yeah? So it's, 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 it's a bit silly. It's, 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 it's so actually an even bigger proof that the judicial system is independent. Yes, I know, I know. So I, 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 find, I find it very peculiar. I think that French the is, French, the, that the yeah. French uh, are actually more interested in finding the truth with respect to this case, wherein they have lost nothing and actually yeah. gain. I mean, the economy gain by the sale of the submarines, right? Compared to Malaysia, well, we Malaysians are the one who lost. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, what is it? What what's in it? What's in it for you? I mean, for the front, for the French people. I mean, I this, think this is I don't know for the French people, but I think that I, I just think, and as I was saying at, a, at not around the beginning of my intervention, is that France uh, is really moving to an anti-corruption policy that's getting pretty strong. And again, the proof is that uh, decision of the Supreme Court, which now authorizes, uh, because as you understood, the civil part can actually launch investigations in France. It can get a judge appointed. This used not to be possible for the Association of Swaram. And as a proof of this will to actually uh, to stop cases from being buried by high profile people, uh, this decision actually shows the, the will of the country, of the judicial system to actually allow parties, ex yeah, independent parties to launch investigation and force uh, this judicial system to actually investigate on some of this thing and I think it's pretty good news. Maybe it will come to Malaysia. Now, you understand the whole issue. If Swaram is to quit now, will you guys proceed? The fact the international corruption. Well, the, as I was saying earlier, the case was launched by the prosecutor's office in this case, not by Swaham. Swaham was then integrated as a civil part, but the prosecutor launched it itself. Okay. So we didn't. So it didn't wait for when Swaham brought this case to its attention, of course, but then they pursued it themselves. But but you have to pay the twelve thousand ringgits a month. Swaram has to pay to keep the case ongoing. Was that correct? The civil part. Yeah. The civil part. Well, the no, civil part in, in, in I think there was a, uh, the the amount for the civil part was one thousand euros for the justice system. Four thousand euros. Yeah, the court fee was one thousand euros. Yeah, the court fee. But the lawyer fee is uh, three thousand euros every month. Ah, I see. But uh, in the event that Swaram is uh, pulled out, it, this this case will will be dropped, won't it? No, no, it doesn't depend on Swaham, it's the prosecutor. The prosecutor is independently... Yeah, yeah, it's in the, it's the system itself. Swaham actually, even though it launched it first, what it brought it to the attention first, then the prosecutor's office took over. So what is the impact? Because currently Swaham is being prosecuted in Malaysia. They're trying to declare an illegal organization. What would be the impact if, uh, if the government succeeds in Malaysia to shut down Swaram? Well, we'll have to find another NGO to actually take care of <laughs> to take on with the case. Uh, no, the case will go on anyways, but I think the judges would be, uh, it would be complicated for them 
uh, since they admitted, to, since Swaham was declared uh, admissible as a civil part, uh, to, well, again, that will be some diplomatic thing, a complicated diplomatic thing, I think. But again, even though, so, I mean, we can only thank Swaham for bringing this to the attention of, uh, of the legal system and of the prosecutor, but I think on today the, the, the case can go on and I hope that they will not shut down So it has gone beyond Swaram? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have done your part. Yeah. Well, without Swaram, I don't think would be there either. I don't think any investigation. It's Swaram who actually gathered all the evidence okay, and well, put it in front of the. Uh, I have a question. This comes from the Malaysian press. I might have to read it out to you. In the current stage of investigation, is there any confirmation that uh, the Prime Minister Najib is aware of, or, of the commission? And, uh, and also, is the Prime Minister, is there any evidence so far that this Prime Minister is uh, known uh, to Atatuya and uh, in the light of what you mentioned, where Atatuya case is now being uh, requested to be part of uh, the This is a French question that are very specific about what's in the investigation. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, is there any. Well, I can't. Uh, yeah. I really can't. So, that's the. I mean, of course, we all realize that this case is, is <coughs> concerns really two key people. It's the Prime Minister and, uh, sorry, what's your name? President <laughs> Paginda. I mean, it's the names that, that we, well, also because we're the Peninsula, but all the notes that been, we have written for uh, always concern him. You always find them in the companies or in the murder, or, you know, even though he was acquitted. But there's, it's always, yeah, yeah. them. So, so you mean that the, the name, both uh, both Raza Pakinda and Najib, their name is all over the places. Well, for uh, us it is. I mean, yeah. every time we write something, uh, the first complaint, then wrote additional notes. Uh, so the simple complaint, the additional notes, the criminal complaint, the uh, Swaham's uh, audition, I wasn't there, but the witness list that Swaham provided, it's up, and of course it's from our point of view as Swaham lawyers, but I, it, yeah, it's always the same thing popping up. Okay, the second part is also on the media, is that uh, they want to know that uh, what's going to happen in the next few months. Well, we are hoping for a uh, other witnesses to be subpoenaed, especially, of course, but I don't know if we can go that fast in the next few months uh, for the Prime Minister. I think it's a bit early. Um, we're hoping for rogatory commissions to be sent to different countries so that uh, maybe, for instance, Malta and all can cooperate, and Malaysia as well. We just keep our fingers crossed that they will actually <laughs> execute uh, the cooperation asked. But yes, the penis and as and demands of co cooperation to other states. Can you summarize uh, what the latest development of case? Because you talk so uh, a lot of things, but it's many things you had mentioned in the press by the news before earlier. So what's the latest you want to tell us? Tell the media what the latest development of the case. You don't want to ask the lawyer. Uh, both. I mean, uh, because there's, you say that there's no comment can you, uh, you can make. Uh, well, all I can tell you is that the judges are not not doing anything for sure, uh, <coughs> and that they just there are just some investigations that have to be launched, especially regarding uh, the obtaining of evidences to. Uh, allow them to actually uh, convoke those witnesses that we'd like them to convoke so that they can explain themselves. Uh, but more than this, really, it's impossible to tell. Yes. Um, I have two questions. 
two questions here. Uh, can you just clarify, uh, just now you said that if, let's say, Swara is uh, declared illegal in Malaysia, so does it mean that uh, Swara is also inadmissible in the procedure? And what, if this happens, then uh, can the case go on by itself or it has to uh, find another civil plaintiff? Uh, so the consequence of uh, Swaham being declared illegal uh, under Malaysian law, I, have, I don't know, what does it do? That it doesn't exist anymore? or It depends on the consequence in on the... You might be rich, so you have no juridical capacity? Or, so well, I guess that with uh, if, it, if it has no... Well, maybe you can actually start up in France, if you Swaham, and you in France. But I guess if it's like Swaham doesn't exist anymore, uh, I don't know how. I'd, again, I, I, I have. I'm not sure what I'm saying because this needs uh, more deep, deeper thought and juridical thought. Uh, but again, uh, the case exists on its own, and so if that were to happen, which obviously. Be well, insane, sorry, can't find any other word. Uh, the case in France would continue. Just just a quick uh, question that perhaps will we'll bypass the earlier question. Um, assuming that happens, at this stage of an investigation before trial, uh, is it possible for another entity to become part of the uh, plaintiff? Oh, yeah. So someone else. It could be another NGO. It could be uh, I don't know any company that suffered maybe loss because it could be any. Someone similar to Swaram who represents the Indonesian people. Well, as long as they're uh, as long as they're well, yeah, of course, uh, registered, but also as uh, I think it's going to be uh, mandatory. Well, mandatory. It's going to need to be fighting corruption as well, so that there's a link between its object. And uh, and the case, so it has to have that, yeah, aim and objective. Could it could it be an individual? It can't be an individual. Well, I can't find a. I can't think of a, an example of an individual. A I haven't seen it. Yeah. What could has to be tried? <laughs> Maybe could it be a piece? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just to add, it, it, it was not such a straightforward, uh, simple process to be, to be admitted as a civil plaintiff. So the uh, prosecutors and the judges were also studying uh, Swaram's work over time to, to determine whether we would be appropriate uh, plaintiffs in the ongoing uh, inquiry. So I, I think the... Um, the question posed by Tony is important that before any eventuality that we can already foresee may happen, it would be important to, to think of another NGO. In fact, we have approached a few French anti-corruption groups. There are not so many that we know <coughs> and work with, but uh, there, are, there are a few. And of course, Transparency International France uh, would, would head uh, the, the, the list, but Transparency International France can only act if Transparency International Malaysia uh, is willing to also cooperate uh, in the case. So we are we are in discussions with them. So I think the the idea to open it up to other entities is, is definitely there because we know I think the way the gov Malaysian government is attacking Swaram, it's quite obvious what they're trying to do. It's just to be stronger, really. But it's not necessary. Plus, uh, I mean, for instance, Waham really brought a lot of elements to the case that <coughs> that the prosecutor didn't have. So they they really, as I said, brought yeah, they brought the case to the attention of the prosecutor and gave elements and explanation, etc. So of course, civil parts are important <coughs> because they can contribute and bring proof and elements and etc. So it's you can work without them, but it's always good to have and some strong ones.
we know for a fact that the way the government is now doing uh, investigations and dealings is to sort of uh, completely strangle uh, Swaram's efforts. Forgetting the fact, it's just not Swaram anymore. It's every other Malaysian who feels for the country and who feels for the taxpayers' money. So the question of whether Swaram is going to be involved, of course, we, we realize that uh, the process, not only in France and some of the other countries that I've been involved in, uh, there's one ongoing now in another country where we manage the project and there is corruption. And, and I know it is, it is it's tedious, but we're only hoping that a change of government is one thing, maybe we are hoping that. Sure. Mm -hmm. But at the way it is going now, uh, the more and more we see the information, the, with, with, I mean, the global, the globalized world, now, the information available, we all know for a fact, right from the murder trial onwards, uh, this thing points to who we all think are responsible. So, at the end of the day, if it is going to take another three or four or five years, uh, I'm sure we have confidence that France of European systems will work. But, the fact that we need at least maybe not just another one or two NGOs in here, and maybe we need another 150 NGOs, so we'll see whether the government will try and close all 150. So I think the effort is has to be more NGOs has to come in. Not only give you this moral support, but anticipate what is going to happen and uh, continue with this. Thank you. You spoke about the possibility of needing another group or NGO to step in. Um, but so far, the, the, the companies or groups and NGOs we're talking about are most of you know, Malaysia and France. So what about some other country like, say, Mongolia? What about, um, say, a Mongolian NGO stepping in to try to push for the case? What, would that be a possibility? Uh, well, the, the, this case right now, it's about <coughs> corruption. Supposedly, corruptions between uh, French companies and uh, Malaysia. So uh, Mongolia doesn't have is not concerned by the corruption, and the judges are seized by the infractions. So the fact, the corruption, uh, not about the person. This is something in the French legal system. Maybe it's the same here. They're seized by the fact, and uh, in order to be a civil part, you have to be concerned by the fact, which is corruption here. So I don't think that would work with uh, with an NGO from Mongolia. Unless we prove that Mongolia is also being corrupted. <laughs> Yeah, so first step, the prosecutor did it themselves. They started investigating, and once they realized that, they, that it was very complex, they needed the help of judges. So yeah, they're the one who requested it. So can we say that uh, actually they are the one who requested the judges to, to start the investigation? And, and, and how well, they're the one who pushed, actually. Yeah, I don't know how you want to say it, but yeah, it's the, it's the prosecutor, the prosecutor who initiated uh, the the appointments of those two judges. So was it was the uh, I can't remember the name, but uh, there was one uh, public prosecutor of France who uh, was in Malaysia. You was saying that there was no case. Uh, so is he part of the? Well, that's what I heard. Uh, it it's not. I, I didn't see his name in the procedure. Uh, I don't know. The problem is that I don't know what he exactly said. We I don't know if it's just extracts of what he uh, said. It's complicated, uh, but. What I can say for sure is that the investigations are ongoing. There, I, I think he used the. He said there is no trial, but that's true. I mean, trial is before court. This is the preliminary phase, so it's investigations and then possibly trial. So if that was the word, then he wasn't wrong about it.
investigating judges will decide if this case will become a criminal trial. Exactly. They decide once all the parties concerned give their point of views, and yeah, it depends on we're going to uh, give our point of views to Swaham, the prosecutor is going to give his, because uh, they believe indicted people will give them what their point of views, and then the judge will decide. Well, I only saw that, uh, but I think it was Dennis's lawyer saying that there was no corruption, but apart from that, uh, I cannot, I have no idea. So you all are not mm -hmm. together when you present to the judge? I know, we, we don't go as lawyers to the judge. We yeah. just go with, uh, for instance, when Swam was uh, addition in, interrogated. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, we can write notes. To say okay, we had found some new elements. Uh, maybe you should dig there. Uh, that's all. So the judge don't come back to you and say, "Tell us these are all tell us defense." And do you have any ah, no, no, no. evidence? No, no. It's just everyone. I mean, for now, I don't know. What, honestly, for tell us, I, I don't know what they're doing. But I know for uh, Swaham that every time we have uh, new elements, new documents, we give them to the judge. It's not the judges. Who come to us, we come to them. So tell us what, imagine. Well, I guess, I guess if someone was indicted, for instance, of course yes. they will try to, what well, they will give documents and write notes to prove that there is no corruption. Yeah. So Everyone will play its part. Can so I describe Suaram as an accredited civil party assisting in the judicial investigation? You mentioned that um, that the uh, the accused party has uh, stepped forward to deny the, uh, the what, uh, when there is one because there's no, there not yet. No, no. So, 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 um, at this juncture, there is the no, um, no dealings, no engagement with the uh, Malaysian government or the Malaysian ministries, be it the Defense Ministry or Foreign Ministry until now? Who do you want to prove? The case. Is there any any interaction? Communication? Yeah. Uh, not that I know of. I don't think there really has been really participating in anything. So, so in other words, the Malaysian government is just sort of like pretending nothing is happening? <laughs> Well, yeah, but they're also trying to shut Swam down, so I guess they know something. As far as the case, official case. No, no, they know, but of course, but again, if uh, they don't need legal representation, juridically speaking, now, but of course, they we all see so, so that they're kind of ignoring it. So eventually, they would need some representation. Well, again, it depends if uh, if and we hope so. Uh, the judges managed to have enough proof uh, to prosecute uh, the Prime Minister, for instance, then of course the Prime Minister would need a legal representation. No, I mean, um, say for example, if they do decide to prosecute, say, DNC, then... DCN. I'm sorry, DCN. Then DCN has paid money to somebody, right? Which entails the uh, involvement of, uh, say, the Malaysian, some Malaysian institution, then the Malaysian institution would therefore also need a representation as well, is it? Is that that's 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 so, but eventually there's a possibility that the Malaysian government will need representation. What I'm asking. So, so they can't, basically, they cannot ignore it forever. Yeah, if there's a trial and they will be subjected to the court procedures and they would have to come and defend themselves and you are presented by the Yeah. But again, the judges have to yeah. the, the get the evidence, indict them. Um, it's all procedure. Yeah. Uh, when a witness is subpoenaed, uh, will you guys aware of it? 
and also that if the, the witness has uh, rejected or the witness has testified uh, to the court, uh, to the judges, uh, will you be aware and would you, uh, can you announce it to the public? Well, we will be aware because we have access to uh, the procedure, but that's something we cannot share as lawyers because of this secret that we have uh, to respect the French law. Can I just ask, uh, Swaran provided uh, what, seven names, mm -hmm. yeah. and then the prosecutor decided to proceed. Uh, are they entitled, is the uh, prosecutor entitled to add more names? Of course, I mean, it's not, it's the judges, judges. not the prosecutors anymore. Uh, the judges can, they, they can do anything they want to do in order to uh, make the, well, we call it manifestation, but I did, to make the truth come out. That's their objective, so they can, yeah, any juridical act they can ask, experts, expertise, they can hear witnesses, they can, yeah, investigate bank accounts, they can, Anything, as long as it's legal, they can do. So they can add. Thank you, everyone, for for coming, uh, especially the MPs uh, and the media for making efforts to come. Uh, we will now close the session officially. Um, if you have any further questions, you can interact uh, informally over. Okay, lunch. Okay. Some refreshments outside. Okay, uh, before uh, before we end, um, may I ask if the Malaysian High Commission wants to say anything? Do you want to say anything? You're just here to observe? Yes. Okay. Okay. So thank you also for your presence. Uh, we hope that the next briefing will be able to be held in Malaysia because there's no reason to keep uh, our lawyers away. And as the case develops, we need to keep fighting to ensure that they can actually come in. So thanks again. Thank you, everyone. And uh, let's, let's go outside for some refreshments.